Jordan is a great dancer, member of diversity, social media superstar. He's got an incredible story. He's very um, active uh, on all platforms. And today, he's also madly into cars, which is how we know each other. Oh my God, really heavy. I'm out of breath. Um, so today we're going to chat to him about what it's like being someone like him. Very famous for dancing, but presents shows. He's got a radio show on Kiss. He's a man of like lots and lots of jobs. So I want to find out today how he does it all and you know the finance side of things and how much of the social media side of things is part of his revenue streams. Um, so yeah, it's going to be cool. But I mean, he loves cars. I love cars. So we'll probably chat about cars for the whole hour. What are we, Bruno? You excited to meet Jordan? He's a nice guy. I'm excited anyway. So obviously my podcast is more about the business side. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and you're obviously incredibly successful at 28. You're only 28? 28. Yeah, yeah, Two yeah. kids. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> I yeah. seem old. <laughs> They've worn me down. <laughs> um, they are cute though. They're they cute are cute on Instagram. They are. Cute. They are. Um, but with all the things that you've done, um, the social media now seems to be a necessary evil. 100%. Is it, would you call it that? I think that is the best way to describe it. Yeah. I, nine times out of 10, like, it's the same as like, I kind of look at the social side of stuff the same way I look at my radio show. TV's a bit different, but like, as much as you are yourself, you, you kind of play like some character, right? Like on our radio show, you know, for example, on our radio show, I'm the more serious one. Perry's the more goofball one. You can pretty much guarantee if there's a subject that's gone viral, we're going to talk about it. You can pretty much guess our stance on it. Yeah. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. And I think social media has kind of been the same in that aspect for me for the way I have to think about it and pursue it. Like, I can't just be myself on there all the time completely because that's just boring. Do you know what I mean? Like, no one cares about yeah. me because I know I've ordered my chicken corn. Like, no one cares about that stuff. Like... And it's a weird one because, like you said, it's a necessary evil in the sense that since when we first started, diversity-wise, Twitter was the big thing. No, and it, it, we speak about this all the time. Sometimes you get, and this is no shade, no disrespect, and it's not, it's not a bad thing, I suppose. But you'll be chatting about, do you want this guest on your show on Kiss? And like they've got 1.2 million Twitter followers. I'm like, yeah, because they were big in 2012, and that's not an insult. But it's like you can't. Everything social media wise moves so quick. Yeah. You can't use Twitter as a metric anymore because no one cares. Yeah. And that sounds horrific. Unless you're a certain type of person and yeah. you put out content in a certain way, there's very few people that can use Twitter now as a platform yeah. for, for monetizing because no one cares. Yeah. It's, it's difficult, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think when the first wave of it came out, and say you had a million Twitter followers mm -hmm. in 2012 or however long, it was a thing. Yeah. Like there was like some leverage or power behind that. Yeah. But now it's not, I, yeah. I, I'm from a marketing background. So um, it was always down to numbers. So even though I've worked with social media influencers, whatever you call them, it would only ever, I wouldn't work with anyone in particular because of the amount of followers. Mm -hmm. It had to come back to ROI, like return yeah. on investment. Mm -hmm. um, so saying that, so now how it's all changed. Um, so so I was never convinced with numbers back in the day. Also, people used to buy followers. Yeah, it was exactly. crazy. You know, you, some from one day to the next, that have fifty thousand more followers. Yeah, and it was like, how? yeah, like you, you know, yeah, it's like obvious. You know, and, <laughs> yeah. um, so I've never been um, a person that like like has fallen for that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Luckily, because of my background. But um, so when it comes to like. Um, offers now i'm sure you get tons of offers mm -hmm. um how does it work when someone offers you because obviously social media and all the young people that are what, looking at social media they're like oh everyone's rich on social media which mm -hmm. is obviously never the case sometimes it is um so it's a super lucrative area of a, a celebrity or um you know so anyone's like um revenue stream now mm -hmm. as a job right so being so lucrative, what kind of like offers do do you get, and like people around you that you know about, whether they're good or bad, and and um, the types of people that are involved in this side of things, yeah. and what are they like? Cool. So one thing people don't realize is everyone thinks it's based on followers. Social media, it's not. No. Right. So you can get someone who was on Love Island in 2016. They've got three million followers. 
But if you look at their rate of engagement, they, they could post a picture and get 2,000 likes. And you've got people, you know, there's car improvement. Take, take, he's always a good example because it, it, it doesn't shock me, but take like Archie Hamilton, right? Mm -hmm. I look at the amount of followers he has. I think it's like over 200K, something like that. So not, car YouTuber. Car YouTuber, yeah. yeah. So a good amount of followers, but not like an insane amount, but relatively, if I look at all those people who've got millions who come from that stream, like um, Love Island and stuff like that, yeah. he will blow all their posts out of the water, comments, interaction, reshares, likes, everything about it. And I use him as an example because it sounds bad. Not every, not every, if I go out on the street, not every general punter's going to know his name. No. Nine times out of 10, if I point out someone in Love Island between, you know, younger than 18, 14 to 30 year old bracket, people will go, oh yeah, that was on this year. You'll know him for that, for that year. Yeah. The difference is there's no, there's no focus to why they've got followers. There's nothing there. Like it, yeah. it, it, it's just, we've seen you. Then, then that's where the real work starts. Everyone thinks you go on the show or something like that, and you're like, okay, cool. You've got the followers. Now the money rolls in. It's like, no, no, this is where the hard work starts. Yeah. So you've got that. Now you need to mold it. The easy side of that stuff for a lot of them is they, they go into fitness because they get approached by brands, and it's the first thing they do. Right. They go into fitness. Someone like Archie, he's built his whole thing based on cars. Yeah. So it's kind of like, a brand knows that, sees his interaction, you go straight to him, boom. He has the potential to earn a lot more than someone who comes off Love Island. Yeah. Now, the difference is there's certain people who come off Love Island who just superpowers, like Molly May, for example. Yeah. She will come off, and between brand deals and because her rate of engagement is so high, yeah. like, it's crazy. Like, I'll... There's some people, like I said, you see millions of followers, a couple of thousand likes. She can post a picture, and I've seen certain pictures of hers get more likes than she has followers. Like, it's insane. Like, it'll go viral, like, just because she did, like, a competition. And even though it was half banter that she was giving away all this stuff, like, yeah. people were taking it, like, oh, and they're posting memes of, like, someone sprinting along the wall, like, my girl trying to win the competition, or whatever it is. Yeah. Like, she's just, like... A, a, like a superpower when it comes to like interaction yeah. and social media. So in a very long way to answer your question, in terms of what you're offered, my fiance is another good example, 140 odd K followers. She gets offered more money than I do for certain posts. And then the difference between me and her is there's a difference between what people deem as a celebrity and an influencer. Yeah. I've got followers because you know, diversity and kiss and I'm a celeb and building stuff up yeah. that way. Yeah. Whereas a lot of people, influence, which it kind of annoys me in a certain way when people don't see it as a real job, they have built this own platform for advertising yeah. off their own back through yeah. good content, interaction, bringing it in. So depending on who you are, what the product is and what the, bud and what the budget is, and that's what's so weird, where it's a relatively new thing, someone could come in and go, listen, I've got a budget and this is what sounds bad as well. I want you to post a picture and free story frames. I can give you fifteen hundred pounds, okay. and then you would go. I would say, absolutely not. There's not a chance I'm doing that. But if you if you look at it from someone who's grafted nine to five, whatever job you're in, all you got to do is upload a picture and forty five seconds worth of content, fifteen hundred quid, mate. Yeah, it sounds like so much money. By the time. Obviously, there's certain things to pay, certain things to do. If you've got management and this and that, a lot of that money gets ebbed away. But content-wise as well, creating that content, even being here, you understand it probably better than a lot of people. Creating content costs money. Yeah. And, that, and that is just the way it is. And no one wants to look at it from that side. But then on the flip side, there's been some stuff where I'll do a job and what I deem as a relatively easy job. And, you know, for like, a post and a bunch of stories I've been offered up to like 75k depending on the brand yeah and then but the the things that come in more from that is then it's usage how they then have rights to it your exclusivity right. so it seems like oh my gosh what you've just done there 75k for a post man that, that's like imagine if you do two of those a month that, that doesn't happen for a start and then the moment you sign that one you're yeah. not allowed to do anything with anyone else who's a competitor for like two years yeah. and you'd be a surprise who a competitor is. You could work with someone like 
eBay that you're not allowed to work with Heinz baked beans for six years because oh. you're a competitor. Like, it's so weird how it all works. Yeah. And that's why it's hard to pinpoint because you have a rate card nine times out of ten yeah, yeah, and you yeah. send out what you're looking for. But depending on their budget, what the brand is, how it works, it varies in my experience of social media. It's not, it's not as clean cut as they've got this many followers, give them this much, go. Okay, cool. So um, that's very interesting. Um, when it comes to these people that are offering you these things, mm. um, do you ever find that clients don't know what they're after? Nine times out of ten, I really? think. I think a lot, that's not true. I think they know what they're after, yeah. and I think they know the result they want. Yeah. But getting there is a different process. Okay. So, like, if you take me, Perry, Ash, all the boys, for example, like diversity, they would say, oh, I loved you. So I, I hosted a TV show called The Greatest Dancer, right? Yeah. So they would go, I loved when you were speaking to the acts upstairs. Okay, and we was interviewing them and we was getting this banter and you were playing this silly game. Yeah. Now, that's what they love. They have they have a product or something that could be a prize at the end of this game, something like that. I know this is like really loose, but yeah. as an example. Sure. But then they would go, and you know, obviously you're a dancer, so instead of just talking the intro, why don't you dance and lift up your T-shirt and have like the message written on it? And you go, why? Like, I'm like, think of the relevance of what you're asking. Do you know what I'm trying to say? And I'm yeah. like, what makes you think that as a normal person sat at home, I'm going to click onto Instagram, see an ad pop up, and it's me moonwalking in going, buy this. You're not, like, no one cares. Oh, Do you know yeah. what I'm trying to say? Like, the, and it's really difficult when yeah. you try and explain that because obviously before you post or do anything, it goes through about four sets of approvals. You know, first of all, they they approve it as like an agent. Then it goes to a client. And then once a client gets it, it then goes above them. So there's, there's always a middleman. Yeah. And in social media, people, I'll, I'll be blunt, are sharks. Like, it's, it's crazy, man. Like, I've seen so many people. It, it, it kind of seems like it would be obvious. But I can't, again, I always say it. Social media, relatively, is such a new business in terms of, like, advertising and that. Yeah. Is that people know what they're doing now. It's got a lot better, but they still kind of are open to just getting stuff swiped from under their feet. So, like, yeah. there's people we've worked with who are currently getting in trouble for offers that basically they'll pitch something to a client, go to go to the influencer, yeah. and the influencer's getting 10% of the money that they think is available. That's there. Like, the budgets, the way, the way people work stuff and change it around, it's crazy because initially it does seem like a lot of money. Yeah. Um, and because on one side, clients don't really know still what they should be paying. So and influencers don't know what they could be getting. You yeah. get this weird vacuum where if people can get that understanding, they swoop in and it's like, look, you're getting a really good deal and you're getting a really good deal, but they're yeah. holding the pot of gold in the middle. Yeah, I think I, I understand what you mean. I think also the, pro the problem with social media and influencers is because there's like macro influencers and micro influencers, all these little things. The problem is, is, and there's all these companies now, all these new little startups, mm -hmm. brands, clothing, but all these, there's millions of companies that need to use influencers. Mm -hmm. So it starts off at a tenner. Yeah. <laughs> and then it goes up to 75K. Yeah, yeah. So the whole middle part of that is just the Wild West. Exactly. And no one really knows what, everyone, the, the person with a 10 pound budget wants to get the three grand person, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's like, yeah, I, it's probably going to get worse. Oh, it will get worse. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and another thing that's crazy is, is TikTok seems like Wild West at the moment because it's it's hard to, it's because obviously where it's, it's all music-based, it's all sound-based. Right. People can be promoting songs left, right, and center, and it's hard for anyone to know that. Because you know now on Instagram... You can't you can't sneeze without having to put ad or gifted or whatever yeah. on there, which is yeah. fair enough. People yeah. should be should know what they're looking at, right? Yeah, yeah. But on TikTok, it's a different ball game because generally, so like, I could upload a picture of me and you sat here, yeah, and it get ten thousand likes. I could upload the exact same picture of the exact same caption and put ad in it, and it will get two. Just the way it works. Like, really? oh, dude, like the moment I put ad on anything, it's almost like human nature is weird. It's like. I know you're getting something from this, so I will not like it. Yeah. Like, it's, it's just like, that's it, straight up. And then as soon as, obviously, it's a knock-on effect, right? So as soon as people start not liking it, then it carries on not being liked. And then, you know, in terms the of the algorithm, algorithm and how much it's seen, it just all drops. So 
on TikTok where you don't have to do that if it's with some stuff it's really obvious so yeah. if I was holding these biscuits and dancing with them I was like these biscuits it was like okay cool you have to you have to put ad they know <laughs> but if you're promoting a song no one knows if you're promoting a song if you're just using the song yeah. so there's so many different layers yeah. between products between music between this between that but some people are so nervous about it yeah whether it like do like they'll put ad gifted affiliate like on everything because a lot of people it is their livelihood now yeah you know giving yeah. up their jobs this is what they do yeah. this is how they earn a living and like if enough people complain about you yeah you'll lose your page like that really yeah on the spot people like instagram will take your page down like you'll lose it no way yeah. bruno has just entered the room by the man way. like bruno yeah if you hear like a pig sounding noise <laughs> bruno's just been out for a little i'd say run but he doesn't run um so yeah if anyone can hear a pig sound it's bruno um yeah, no, that's interesting. I, I'm just getting these visions now where you're like on Zoom calls and people are like, can you hold our biscuit and dance a bit? Dude, literally, it can be, it can be that <laughs> obvious sometimes. And then sometimes you get like a really cool idea. And like at the moment, we've started a, um, we've got a new like brand partnership with Grenade, right? Energy drink. Energy drinks, Grenade. Okay, right? I've, I've seen what you've done with that. Yeah. And it's actually quality. Dude, I'm not going to lie. It was like a film. Like, yeah. Having the resources there. And that was because they came to us. And it was a case of like, we basically want to make cool content. And that's yeah. what I think we love about Grenade from the get go. Yeah. I think it was just a case of we had, it was a relatively small team. Yeah. And there was uh, obviously my older brother, Ash, choreographed and worked really, really closely with a dude called James, the director there. And they just worked every shot, basically all the, aside from the tank, any cars or like the, like the cool, like the Rikers and stuff like that we yeah. had there. Yeah. It was just our own stuff that we brought down. Yeah. And it was just, we basically hired out this place, brought some lights and just yeah. had a drone and you just had like, don't get me wrong, relatively for a, a shoot, like how big it could have been and how it turned out. Yeah. You know, when you've got, there's so, on big shoots like that, uh, honestly, bro, I've, I've seen things where I've been on shoots, I've been a part of them where I'm not exaggerating between client, cast, crew, there's over a hundred people there yeah, yeah. for like three minutes of footage and yeah. it takes it would take like three, four days to do. Yeah. Everyone's stressed. Too many cooks in the kitchen. Yeah. It turns out half as good when it could have been half as cheap to do. And it's just it's just crazy. Whereas this with grenade, yeah. it was look, this is these are the things we want to do. Go nuts with it. Yeah. Um and that was it. it was like, can we have the tank? Can we have this? Can yeah. we make this work? And now it's just the next year, there's not some big plotted out thing that it's like this is what you're doing. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like let's have some fun and see some crazy stuff that we can make. Okay, so the process, like for an ad agency and a and a and a client, so the brand, so Grenade, they'll probably use an ad agency. They'll go to the ad agency and go, right, we've got this budget. This is what we want to achieve this year. Ad agency will come up with some ideas, like creative ideas, mm -hmm. um, and then they'll find talent and that kind of stuff. Right. So Grenade is an example of how to do it, yeah. right? Compared just, to earlier, Grenade just quickly was a funny one because they cut all of that out. Oh, they that just did it themselves. Man was cut out. So the fun, the way it happened was Paul Wallace, another car YouTuber. Paul, yeah, Paul, right? Yeah. Good friend of mine. Yeah, good right. friend of mine. I met Paul yeah. when I in two thousand and thirteen or fourteen. Yeah. yeah, when I had my, I had a, an Audi TTS that I wrapped matte green, the same color as my Aston. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I turn up to Dub Customs, and when I turn up there. Paul was there. Yeah. I'm a big fan of Paul. Like I, 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 love, yeah. I love his channel, right? One of the original guys. Yes, yeah, so I was like, yeah. do you want to meet Paul? And I was like, yeah, I do. And he, yeah. he had his R8 at the time. I yeah. Think, I think it was Matt Pink. Gray. Just, uh, yeah, it, this was it Pink? And yeah, this no, time, he did, yeah, at one point. So this one was, <laughs> this one was Matt Gray. Don't judge Paul on Pink. <laughs> He's actually quite a cool guy. He's a cool dude. Yeah. And um, basically from there, I think he, we always kept in touch. He always came to his shows and he's yeah. such a cool guy. We always got on with speaking cars and, you know, just became good friends from there, really. Anyway, yeah. He'd been working with Grenade and said, dude, I think you and you and your brother should come down. They're having a launch. It was when they first launched their energy drink. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we went down there. He introduced us to the owner, yeah. Alan. And everyone just all got on really well. And then, you know, next thing we were at Alan's house for dinner. The whole middleman agency, let's go. Gone. This. Gone. And it, yeah. again, that's what I say, like, really loved about Paul. Wants to get, wants to get something done. He does it. Yeah. And it was the same with Grenade. Like, I'm yeah. pretty sure we sat down. And within, you know, 30 seconds, it was, boy, let's just cut the shit. What do you want to do? And it was like, okay. Like normally with a client, it's three yeah. to four weeks 
with you know the middleman yeah how is it going to work what do yeah. we do their ideas first not just look this is our kind of budget here's kind of the stuff we want to do here's the stuff we can offer you in terms yeah. of like what's at our disposal to make something cool you up for it and he was like yeah and that literally the whole process was like Seamless. 10 times quicker yeah, yeah. So, so much better so do you think um and that's like that's the power of like introducing mm -hmm. someone or like recommending a friend as you call it you know like a referral um, do you think because it was like that, it was it was simpler? If it was an ad agency coming at you, do you kind of feel like you're being bossed about a bit? Yeah, it, 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 it's really difficult with agencies in the middle because yeah. to be blunt without sounding rude, mm. they're trying to justify why they're there the entire time. Yeah. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Of yeah. course they have a job, but it's yeah. like once you've introduced us to the client yeah. and especially with talent yeah. like us yeah. we're our own creatives so yeah. like we make the stuff and we don't need yeah. your ideas yeah. and all, all it then happens is you take an idea to a client they're like, oh we really like yeah. you bring it to us we don't like it we give yeah. you an idea that we think works better for us and the client yeah the client love it but then you're trying to justify why you think it should be your version of the idea then you have to try and combine and it's just you okay. get this whole mess in the middle sometimes Do you know it makes sense and maybe that's like a, a newer thing because even like joel he does like some random funny stuff on his instagram yeah. for alpro i think yeah it is. yeah 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 um and i know for a fact that he's come up with that yeah so i feel like alpro have obviously gone look here's some money mm -hmm. do what you want do something funny yep so it's kind of like at the agency level i mean oh they're all you're always going to need agency stuff for like selling beans 100%. like whatever yeah. you know but when it comes to like the, all the creative talent, because mm -hmm. obviously there's a lot of talent that aren't creative, they just turn up and do what they say. But the whole, it seems like from what I've seen, is that all the creative talent, clients can just go, well, look, here's what we want to do, do something fun. Yeah. And then it removes that middleman and it's just more fun for everybody. Especially when you've gone there, you're, you're with that person for a reason. Take Joel, for, for example. He knows his audience better than anyone, yeah. better than the ad agency he's going to. Yeah. So whatever ideas they come up with are always going to be second rate compared yeah. to what he wants. So if he has an idea of how he can involve your product, yeah. it's still his content, so it has to fit that mold yeah. in order for it to be organic and work. Otherwise, if he does something that's compl a complete curveball, unless it's like something that's a complete curveball for positive reasons. It's yeah. the complete opposite to his normal content. Yeah. Everyone who's following him is going to go, add, gone, swipe, and yeah. that's that. Like, no one cares. You got me move on. So if it's a genuine thing, mm -hmm. you know, um, then it, your audience will engage better. And it sounds that's so a, horrible to be like, oh, you know, you've got to be real because by its very nature, like social media yeah. isn't real. But yeah, if it's, if it's an organic kind of segue into whatever the product is, yeah. then yeah, in my opinion, or in my experience, I should say, it engages a lot better. Yeah, mm. that makes sense. And it comes across, though, the thing you did with Grenade, you, you can tell that everyone's into it. Yeah. Like, the dance and everything. You can tell that everyone, like, is loving being there. Mm -hmm. And there's, like, a lot of things you see online, you can tell they're just not... They're there because they're getting paid. And they're, like, that's... they're literally doing it with their hand like this. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Like, put the cash in there, please. <laughs> <laughs> like... What's the transfer? Let's carry on. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, okay, so um, when it comes to, like, income now, mm -hmm. I mean, you do a lot, so it's probably different f for you, but, um, and we, we are talking about social media because, obviously, um, it's, like, the big thing now. Yeah. What kind of percentage of your income is social media? Mm. That's, a, that's a good question, actually, because, obviously, there's diversity. Yeah. There's live diversity. Like our tours, tours our shows, yeah. like this and yeah. that. There's like our online dance school. Yeah. Then there's the social side for diversity. Then there's my own socials. Then there's Kiss. Yeah. Like radio stuff. And then there's like TV work. Yeah. So they're like a bunch of different revenue streams. Yeah. Social media is a weird one because you can have a plan and you can set up brand deals and stuff like that. But generally, it's kind of like you can know. Any, anyone, anyone, whether it be something gifted, I'm talking someone with 100 followers can yeah. get something gifted. Yeah. Like, if you speak to enough brands, people are always willing to work with people. Yeah. Um, so, like, some months, you know, you can have, like, a relatively good month. Some months, like, you can have, like, oh, wow, like, this is an amazing month. Yeah. But I would say, like, on a year, yeah, 25%, something like that. Okay. I was going to guess about 20, 25. Yeah, 20, 25%. Uh, it could obviously be, be a lot higher. Yes. If you wanted to like dance with nappies and stuff. If you, um, 
the amount of offers that come through, literally just before now, someone was on the phone to me and I was like, and it'll be like, okay, yeah, I have an idea. There was two things to do. And it was like, you can do, like, they both need to go up today, one by yeah. two o'clock and the other one at five. And I was like, well, I'm not doing the other one then. Like, mm. because like they, they have like their strict schedules, you know, yeah, has to yeah, go yeah. out and stuff. Sure. And I, as much as I, you kind of, this is a debate I kind of have with my fiance because she's an influencer for her. It's what she does, right? Yeah, so yeah. she's sort of like a baby influencer. Yeah. And I was like, you need to kind of draw the line somewhere. Yeah. At, and without trying to sound like, you know, some inspirational speaker here, money and happiness. And when I say yeah. happiness, it's like stuff that you just want, like you just don't mind doing. Yeah. Not everyone wakes up every day and goes, I love my job. This is passionate. This is my pure passion. You're yeah. really lucky if you can do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, everyone's got to earn money, but then at some point you've got to draw the line and say, look, either I don't, you know, yeah. they, enough's enough. Um, you've got to draw the line and yeah. say enough's enough, right? Yeah. So I think if I if I really wanted to, all of us wanted to do a lot more social media-wise, you yeah. could. Yeah. But then it's just time. Like at the moment, so five days a week, um, I do Kiss Breakfast, yeah. right? So I'm up at quarter past three yeah. in the morning like, and after, by the time I do that, we have a few meetings after we do this, we do that. I normally end up leaving there about 11-ish, half yeah, 11. Yeah, yeah. Very rarely do I then not have to do anything throughout the day. Yeah, It's either meetings or rehearsal or filming or a TV thing or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Nine times out of 10, I try and get home before my kids go to bed. Yeah, But like that's that five days a week. And then on the weekends, there's there's more work. And like I said before, creating content, especially for a client who has a very specific thing in mind, but it also has to fit your audience, yeah. it's time consuming. It's not a case yeah. of me putting up my phone and going, boom, wicked. Like, it takes time. You need to find the right place. You need to get the product in the right, right way. Everything needs to be perfect. Yeah. And especially when you've got a couple of kids as well, like I do, trying to find the time to actually make that work is difficult. Um, and I know that applies to me. And obviously, my older brother Perry doesn't have any kids, and the yeah. other boys who uh, who are doing stuff as well. Yeah. And they're they're relatively newer to it because of TikTok. Yeah. Because social media wise, so if there's like diversity, there's Ash who's like the front man. Yeah. Perry's always been the kid with the hair and does the flips. Everyone recognizes yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. And before and for a long time, it was just those two. Yeah. And then I did the jungle, so now there was like three of us kind of front in yeah. the group. Um. So in terms of like social media and stuff we all had relatively bigger platforms and the yeah. boys still had like decent platforms, yeah. <clears throat> you know, between like your 50 K's and hundred K's and stuff like that. So they had like relatively big platforms, um, but just not as many things would go into them for like ads and social media. Yeah, but sure. with TikTok, it, it, that is such a wild West moment. And the thing like, to go viral on TikTok, it's not easy, but yeah. the rate at which people go viral is just crazy. Yeah. Like, Every, you can swipe down TikTok a million likes, three million likes, two million likes. You click on their profile and they've got like 400 followers because the video's done well. It's crazy. This is, uh, I think they fake the numbers. Do you? What, on TikTok? Yeah. I had it. Um, so Max and Harvey, do you know those guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, really, really well, though, Max Harvey really well. Do you really? Well, really well. Yeah, okay. Well, um, they've been in. They, I know. I've to them. I was really jealous because I saw them I saw him with pictures in your land by and I was like, there yeah. they are, the punks. Get out of that car. <laughs> I, I, let, I, let, um, I let one of them. I'm trying to remember which one's which. <laughs> Max and Harvey. Um, yeah, Max. I think Max drove it. Really? Uh, yeah. How do you find it? Max, yeah, because they sit on the. Yeah, yeah Max yeah. did, yeah. Um, well, I only let them drive it down this road. Okay. But then I, um, one of them were in Heelys and, and I was pulling them. <laughs> oh, nice. But it was all for TikTok. And I was talking to them and I was like, I mean, it's a Chinese company. Mm. I mean, you can't trust any company, mm. American or whatever. But I was saying that um, this is how you get the young kids hooked. Mm -hmm. You know, if one kid who's like 12, 15, 18 gets one video that says it had 8,000 views, it's like giving heroin to someone. So you get hooked on it. Right. You and, do. and so, like, what's, no one has to, Instagram could just put you've got 10,000 likes. It's up to them, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know? So what, you know, the reality of, t and it, you can't, like a return on investment thing, you can't prove it. You can't prove that the, the views are, are correct or, or incorrect, mm -hmm. you know? There's no way of like, like monetizing a view or anything like that. So I, I don't know, it's something, my gut feeling says, if you want to get people hooked on something, do you know what I think they do? And I, we, we, you know they do. First of all, it's really hard to get a read on TikTok numbers mm -hmm. because 
it seems very easy to go viral. And when I say easy, I mean like so many people do on there. Yeah. And not always the same people. Like yeah. a lot of new people are constantly going. And I feel like there is some truth in your theory in terms of like where it's relatively new and it wants to get more people hooked on it. You know, the better people do on something, the more they want to sure. do it, right? Yeah. And I, I've noticed that myself. So like I TikTok, Perry, 1.9 or 2 million followers, loads of followers. I've got like 250k, right? Yeah. I just I just I just don't go on there. Really. Yeah. I go on there to watch stuff because it cracks me up. I just don't post or create. On you there like two hundred fifty k is not a lot. Oh god, I mean, so, <laughs> so rubbish. Only quarter of a million. I mean, in comparison to to um, Perry and Ash, not a lot. And yeah. there's another boy in the group called Nathan, right? So on Instagram, forty five k followers, something like that. Never really done an ad on there in his life, nothing like yeah. that. In the space from December until now, three hundred and fifty k on TikTok. Right. He started TikTok in like the December. Yeah. So it's been like three months. Yeah. 350K. Yeah. He's so consistent on it. Really? Three, four videos a day. Does he make money? Now he does. At okay. first, no. Like good money? Decent money. Yeah. yeah. Decent money. Yeah. And it will only grow because where it's still so fresh. Sure. You know, but his thing is quite niche. So because he's a dancer, I don't yeah. know that's what TikTok is, because like, a lot of dancing things, but it's not just dancing now, but yeah. that's what a lot of his videos are. It's kind of easier sometimes to... For a brand, yeah, you know, if they if a client goes to them and goes, you know, that's why I said before there's a difference between an influencer yeah. and a celebrity. Because, like, I guess on my side of stuff, I could be promoting a new TV show that's coming out, a pair of trainers I like, or because I've got kids talking about nappies, right? Yeah, yeah. Because I'm a like classed in the celebrity bracket, right? You fall into that. Whereas when you're an influencer, it wouldn't really be any good if, for example, Paul Paul Wallace, car YouTuber, randomly turn up. Leaning against his car but holding a pack of pampers. I mean, it, it, yeah. it, it just makes no sense yeah, on yeah, that on that yeah. side. But in terms of numbers, like I was saying, the when you first start, your engagement's so high, you always do better. Yeah. Now I base myself against Perry a lot, even though he's literally got ten times the followers. Yeah. He could do a video, and it get a million likes, and it's like wow. He could do a video the very next day, and it get five thousand. And I could do oh. the exact same. We could upload the same video. And not more than likely not, yeah. but there's, you know, a chance my video will do better. So knowing that, what do you do with that information? What can you do? I don't think anyone's really figured out the algorithm or why stuff or does or doesn't do well. Because I, I went on TikTok for a week mm. um, and I was like, this is a bit of a di bit addictive. I'm going to get off it. Yeah. Um, and with Instagram, obviously, if you have a business profile, you can see your audience. Mm -hmm. Like you see all the stats. Can you do that on TikTok? You can. You can. But it still doesn't really make much sense. Best time to post, best this, best that. Yeah. Who your demographic is, all of that. Yeah. It's still, I mean, it, 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 that's why I get so confused. Like I'll, I'll look on there now and, you know, I think my last video yeah. got about 8,000 views and it was just awful. And I just did it on a whim. I was like, oh, let me upload something. Oh, that's like. I was like, this is a really good idea. And then yeah. I've got other stuff that I'll do on a whim in about literally five seconds. Like, oh, that's funny. Yeah. And it'll get 150K, 150K likes, a million views like that. And it's like, it's really difficult to try and gauge on there because I've seen so many people who have a demographic, have a thing, have a that, yeah. and they upload something that seems like it's the direct opposite and it'll do really well. It's different to Instagram, TikTok. It's hard to get a gauge on, I think. I think, you know, um, my worry with that is like, you know, the psychology side of it with kids. Mm. It's like, because if a kid gets a video and it does like really, really well, and then after that, like the 10 videos at this tank do nothing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is that kid going to remember that forever? Oh, yeah, they'll be gutted by it. Yeah, definitely. definitely. And then like they just go into like a, you know. I think, I think as adults, you remember it. You're like, oh, especially when you, especially when you, uh, and this is something else that I find really strange. Yeah. Of course, some people like it's weird. Like, do you remember <laughs> ages ago? There was that viral video, like years ago now. And there was that girl who went, I'm in my mum's car. Brum, brum. Do you yeah, remember that? Yeah, yeah, you yeah, guys yeah. remember her, right? Yeah. I saw her, I'm pretty sure, on TikTok doing an ad. And I was like, how crazy is that? Like, and it's not, it's not an insult. I'm like, man, like, if you could do it, do yeah, it. Like, yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, but yeah. I'm like, how, how crazy is that? Because I saw her, she did another video on TikTok and it was like, um, someone said, tell me the time when you went viral when you didn't mean to go viral. And she appears and she's like, I was really hot and I sat in my mum's car 
and film myself for five seconds as a joke. And now, you know, years later, we can both sit here and say, yeah, I know, we know exactly who that girl is. And, you know, she's, it's like something funny and people make reference to that. And it's kind of one of them weird ones where I feel like a lot of people go viral. A lot of people go viral. And then in their head, it's like, well, a first question you get is, well, how, how much how much did you make from it? Or like, what did you, what did you do? And it's like, yeah. dude, I was just messing around and people liked the video. Like, yeah. But because of that mindset, yeah. you then will try to monetize it. You then will try to pursue it. And hard to do. Very, very hard to do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the whole space is still where, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, do you know what's funny? Um, I think I like talking to you because um, how long have we been going? I haven't even started asking you question, my questions. <laughs> we've just been chatting. We've just been chatting been about chatting. stuff. Like, like, <laughs> I mean, I don't even know if I'm going to get time to ask my questions. Oh, but, um, uh, yeah, no. Um, so one of my questions is, obviously, COVID is such a horrible word, mm. but you're in it from the dance world. Yeah. You know, obviously you do all these other things. Um, but I'm imagining it's massively affected. Oh, you said you did tours and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you were, if you were a, dancer now like starting off mm -hmm. um how would you approach it because obviously now you have to have social media side you have to have all these other different ways of bringing mm -hmm. in money mm -hmm. um how would you approach it now if you're a dancer i think it's really difficult because we've got so so many people so many friends diversity as a brand is lucky because in terms of dancing we Coincidentally, we started the process for our online dance school, 20DB, back in 2017. Yeah. It was only ready to launch by the time we got everything right by 2020. And too many expensive lessons learned along the way, but, you know, that, that stuff kind of happens. Yeah. But 2020, ready to launch. And we were launching it March 12th, 2020, at, at something called Move It. Now, Move It is a huge show. I've heard of it. March 12th is literally when it... The shutdown started, roughly. right? Right. Okay. Huge show, March 12th, this when it was going on. And we were going to go there. And I think it's something crazy. Across the week that it's open, it's like something mad, like, you know, half a million people come through this dance convention. Yeah. Like, yeah. it is huge, like, yeah. worldwide. And we were like, we're going to go there. We're going to teach classes. We're going to put on a huge performance. And we're going to launch it off the back of this. Now, because dance is where our thing is such a, a specific thing you're targeting, a specific set of people. Yeah. A general Instagram ad isn't enough. Yeah. A general TV. Going to this live event would do you better than putting it on TV to a lot of people. Yeah. And it's just it's just the way it would work. And the time we went to move it before this, without trying to sound like, you know, big headed or anything, because of what we because we're dancers and it was an all dance thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had one of our, okay, there was an assistant with us who was, bless her, pregnant at the time. She literally got trampled, like, by people. Like, there were security guys just getting swamped. Like, 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 it was just crazy because it's all dance-based, right? Mm -hmm. And, like, dance is quite a, people are passionate who do it, right? So we were like, we're going to go there, we're going to launch this, it'll be wicked. And then it got shut down, obviously, because of the whole COVID situation. So when you put so much money into something, you know, you've sunk a lot into it. And then the and the launch pad pulls last second because no one knew what was going on. As much as everyone was like, oh, be prepared, be this, be that. How could you have been prepared for COVID? No. You couldn't. Like, unless you had a strong business model, you was in trouble. And that was yeah. just the way it was, right? Yeah. So dance, which is primarily something live-based, you know, so many people we know in, in theatres and West End and this and that, man, they, they just had to go home. Just working normal jobs, they're in, they're yeah. in like not even retail. They're they're working like you know in, in supermarkets or doing whatever they got mm -hmm. to do. And some who were lucky enough to have made because they were really good dancers and made a bit of a profile for themselves on TikTok or yeah. on Instagram, they kind of managed to survive off that side of stuff. Yeah. But even then, that worked so sporadic. And then because of COVID, everyone with a budget was like, no budget now. Pulled yeah. out everything went got pulled away. Um. But where diversity has been going like for a while, you know, you there's a business model there, there's reserves there, you're fine, and you kind of build back up and everyone gets a bit more comfortable. But in terms of a dancer trying to break in now, it depends what you want to do. Because yeah. if you're asking me from a, I want to go to dance college, leave, I never did that. That wasn't my route. You know, yeah. we were a bunch of friends. It's what we love 
to do. We went on Britain's Got Talent kind of as a bit of a last hurrah because, you know, we was all getting to the age, 18, 19. It was like, you're either going to carry on or you're going to stop. People were going uni. And then we won. And it was like, whoa. Yeah. And then we, we made something from that. Yeah. But in terms of, you know, if you wanted to go into being a backup dancer or a choreographer or this or that, we've, we, we're, we're moving out of it now. Yeah. The whole COVID situation, which is good. But in terms of it, like right now, there's just hasn't been much people have been able to do. Yeah. You know, have, trying to break it. Like a lot of people are doing Zoom classes, which is good. Mm -hmm. And that's because they were lucky enough to have a base in the dance world, like a respected teacher, people. Yeah. Were, but again, ties into social media like so much stuff now for a lot of people who are live and creative over this past year have had to fall back onto social media because yeah. there hasn't been anything else to do so how do you think when it's all back to normal do you think it will go back to normal i don't i i think relatively yes yeah because i think everybody wants normal but stuff is always now going to feel a bit different in my opinion yeah um so in terms of of dancing one thing i never did and even now, could never do. I hate it, the thought of it. Out of every job I do, the thing I've done the most and longest is dancing. It's the mm. thing I'll always be most nervous for. Like, really? oh, dude, I, part of me, like, before a performance, I'll yeah. just be like, why, why do I even do this? Like, I hate it. Really? And then in the middle of it, at the end of it, the feeling, like, I love it. It's the best thing in the world. But before, oh, man, I hate it. Why? Oh, it scares the life out of me. But the, you're good at it. The pressure of being bad, especially since diversity because right. now ex everyone expects you to be good and if you're not like you I, I don't think since i've been a, since I, we won since i was 15 yeah i don't think i've ever danced and not feel like this has to be good like just dance and just done it because i want to do it do you just doubt yourself a bit i suppose a little bit because i, I guess there's a case of like it's not just me i'm worrying about it's like yeah. if i look bad diversity looks bad and that's not good that's the way I view it. You know, we have a responsibility to be good for not just ourselves, but the whole team. I know a perfect way for you to get over that. Go on. I'll send you a video of me dancing. <laughs> and, and you can just watch it before you go out and go, well, it's <laughs> never right. going to be that shit. Right, it's <laughs> only going so far. <laughs> I am amazing at dancing, is what you'll be saying. Like, <laughs> and if you want to look good, just add me to diversity. Boom, there we go. Just stick me on the end of diversity. <laughs> you'll be like, oh my God. <laughs> they were like, John is so good. That's He's so, so good. Um, so yeah, if you ever need a, um, a wedding agent. That. Next tour, next tour. Yeah, yeah, add me in. Yeah. Add me in. Um, <laughs> um, radio. Yes. Right. I had Mark Dolan on. Okay. Um, off LBC. Yeah. Um, Really, he's a comedian yeah, yeah. originally, obviously, but quite controversial. Um, he was telling me that in radio now for LBC, one of their biggest revenue streams is Facebook video mm. and video content mm -hmm. for YouTube. Right. Yeah. Um, obviously, LBC is not anywhere near the size of Kiss, I don't think. Um, or it's 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 pretty big. Yeah, LBC's um, huge, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's they pretty are big. Killing it are they right, big, right. as big as Kiss or big, the yeah. brand wise? <laughs> Brand awareness, I'm not so sure. Yeah. But again, it's like when I said about engagement and if, yeah. like, who, the people who listen to it yeah. really listen to it. Like, listening hours wise, it's hour and hour. Like, it's like, it's ridiculous. Like, yeah. people who listen to LBC really listen to it. Yeah. Th yeah, that, yeah. That's like a, a, a Paul Wallace audience. Yeah. Compared to like a celebrity audience. Yeah. And, exactly. You know, yeah. That's, that's um, what I'm saying. So, yeah, Kiss has been around a long, long time. Do you guys, do you guys have to do a lot of video? Or is it just you just guys, pay, you get paid for your show? And a, lo you, a lot of our well, stuff, like on air, yeah. will be made into video content. Right. Because yeah. there's cameras all in the studio. Okay. And again, the thing with Kiss that I've, I've got to give ratings for, yeah. you would think that something the size of it, yeah. it would be way more controlled than it is. And yeah. I don't mean it in a bad way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd have like, you know, hand around your neck. This, this is what we need. Yeah. This is what we're going to get. And to a certain extent, of course, there, there is that, but only that up until the point where once you get the job, it's like they're looking for the right sort of person. And once you get, once you get that, it's pretty yeah. much creative freedom. So in our studio, there's me, Perry, and then we have our producer, producer Rob, who is just the direct opposite to me and Pell, which is why it works. Like he is, he's only 23 and he's the, he's the head producer of a, of a breakfast show. Nation, a huge <laughs> one. Like, that's the sort of dude he is. Like, producer rob this is him we sat there and he went oh i i, I hated school and we went oh really did you not like class do you want to muck around he's like no i just remember being there and 
it was one time and he, he was so vivid the way he described it. He was like, he was six years old and he remembers being sat down in the lunch hall when all the kids were playing and he looked around and he went, oh, I'm so done with this, I want to grow up. And I was like, <laughs> but that's the sort of guy Rob is, right? Really? So there's me, Pell, Rob, and all of our content, obviously we have, we have um, other producers as well who like help us with little bits, but yeah. really it's us three in there. And even talking about it now, I'm like, oh, it's sick, because I go in every day and I can see something, I can see something on the Metro, or yeah. it could be anything. It could be me doing something stupid or even something Rob said, yeah. and it gets made into like this entire conversation. And it, and then it's only when I watch it back because everything's filmed, it'll get yeah. put out. Yeah. And, you know, it's just awesome content. Is he is he like your Carl Pilkington? Literally, that's what he is. That that is that is producer Rob. Really, he, honestly, dude, he is <laughs> hilarious. Like I've got I've got videos of him. Like, and I'll make like random. I'll get like random sound bites from Rob, yeah. and I'll like play them sometimes. Yeah. And there's like he's from he's from outskirts of Liverpool, right? But he's dead serious all the time. Yeah. And one of my favorite sound bites from Rob is him going. There will be no whapping in this studio. I will not be whapping. Like, without context, it's just the best thing ever. Like, he's so funny, man. It cracks me up. Amazing. So, yeah, a lot of our video content on there comes from either interviews, which now is obviously all over Zoom, yeah, or the links. Yeah. But then there are certain things we do. Like, the other day we did, it hasn't actually been released yet, but we did, um, like, the chili challenge. So, okay. the... Sounds the, awful. The Carolina Reaper. We had to eat that. So, like, the hottest chili in the world, right? Yeah. I think it had, like... The ones we had, the Scoville rating was 2 million, and your average pepper spray is 1.4. No way. Yeah, really? dude. So when we ate this, right, when I mean, I was in agony. Like, it was bad. Like, it was so, so bad. I don't know why. I, I think I'm like, I don't know why we did it. We got so hyped up. And we were like, and you know, again, between me, Perry, producer Rob, like, we're all laughing. We, everyone gets hyped. And then before you know it, there's a whole setup there. Yeah. It's been the the shop, the, the the shoot's been sponsored. I think it was sponsored by Nando's for their new, their new hot sauce. <laughs> and before we knew it, we we're sat there. And I was looking at Perry like, why was this a good idea? Like, why? But, you know, once it's edited down, it's put out there, it'd be an awesome video. Yeah. You so know, the content would be really it, good. It sounds like I'm a celeb all over again. Oh, yeah. But to be fair, I think I would rather eat that pepper than a kangaroo's penis. Oh, I'm going to be fair. <laughs> so start with the bait. No, no one wants to eat kangaroo <laughs> cocks, do they? <laughs> don't want to. If it's you like... do, there's something like yes. wrong with you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you do radio, you yeah. do all these other things. Um, and you talked about you feel pressure when you go on stage. Mm. Um, where do you feel the most pressure now? Considering you do so many different things. Dancing still. Still. Because when it comes to hosting and presenting, yeah. I don't know why. There is a I'm way more confident presenting something than I am performing, dancing. Right. Yeah. And I've only been doing it like a, a lot less time. Because I feel like once you relax, yeah, and once you've like like I think you would be awesome at presenting. Because like you're so chilled in this conversation. Like the different styles of presenting and hosting and this and that. Like having an interview with someone, yeah. nothing pains me more. Like the reason why we didn't get onto your questions because we started the first one. Yeah. Then it was a conversation. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing pains me more than like I don't know me going to you. So you know, dude, why did you start Modball? And you could go listen. It's so so weird. Like an asteroid smashed into the London Eye right in front of me and I'd go cool so when's the next one like there wasn't a conversation to just be had yeah, there yeah. do you know what I'm trying to say yeah. nothing pains yeah. me more than when it's like you've got your list of questions yeah. I'm going to ask you I could click on any interview on YouTube yeah. and scroll down yeah. and they would all they would all be the same Yeah. like it, honestly it really it really bothers me and yeah. being on both sides I've been interviewed a lot and I've done I've interviewed a lot of people and when I'm being interviewed, you always try and stay polite and you always try and stay engaged. But it's really difficult when you can just see someone listing off a bunch of questions. They don't care. You don't really care to answer them. It's like, let's get this done and move on. Yeah. Um, so like, especially on KISS, that's the one thing we try and do. It's kind of like, you have an idea. Obviously, everyone, you're on there because you've got something to plug and you want to chat about it. Yeah. Um, so it's like, okay, we're going to get to that point. Yeah. Yeah. But before that, you know, whether it's me, Dua Lipa, or you know, Cole from Sheffield who's rang up to have a chat, we're yeah. all on that kind of same, that same level and we'll just like go all chuck stuff in. And yeah. that's that's yeah. kind of how we found works best. Yeah. And I find that works best for 
all kinds of stuff, whether it be my Instagram or this or that, that having that organic, just let's just do it. Feel. Yeah. Whereas with dancing, I think because it feels so much bigger than me, like, like diversity, yeah, like it's, it, there's a lot of pressure. Like if I mess something up, yeah. it affects every single person there. Okay, yeah. And that 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 worries me. Like I'm not a big person for wanting to take that kind of stuff on. Yeah, yeah. Like if it affects me, I'm like, okay, like I'll deal with it. But when you kind of like, oh, you mess it up for other people, it's not yeah. good. Yeah, so the, the, the word I think that comes from that is the word genuine. Yeah. Um, like for me, um, everyone that I've t- spoke spoke to on here, um, I've got like literally a, like a genuine interest, and we have things in common. Mm-hmm. Like like, um, we this is the first time we've met. Yeah. But um, I've like followed you for ages, and I kind of know all your cars and that kind of stuff. But that's first, so yes. Like yeah. we, you know, we've got a lot of things in common. Um, so I think that's like um, I appreciate the compliment actually about um saying how I do this. Um, but for me, like the good thing about this podcast and why i did it is because like, i want to learn from people that i'm genuinely interested in and people that inspire me um so i could sit here all bloody day and listen to you you know and i'm learning stuff already you know especially about all the things you said um and i think with content in the future like it's talking about ads in particular um people can see if there is an ad that's forced and it, if it's mm-hmm. an ad that's genuine and i think oh, hopefully in time that it will only it will only be genuine stuff yeah you know because yeah. people will realize you know uh, uh, agencies and brands that people only engage with genuine stuff exactly you know and um, i feel like if you can tie it in a way that's quite like it, it sounds weird like i've worked with a few brands where it from, even to me it wasn't an obvious match but if you can make it work yeah then also i'm not saying that you have to specialize in i don't know let's say you're got to do an advert for Tropicana for some juice. Yeah. I'm not saying you've got, to sp- you've got to be the guy picking the oranges to do the advert, you yeah. know what I mean, to be a social influencer for that. But, you know, th- there's got to be some way to link it to what you're doing. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I feel like it's, it's hard. Like, people feel like there is an obvious segue to it and it still yeah. doesn't work. Yeah. And I think that's because sometimes people struggle to put something out and not feel the pressure in a weird way. They try and do what they think an influencer should do. And then yeah. because of that, you get that kind of forced, you know, not not ideal situation. I really like the word genuine, actually, because um, you've been um, written about in the papers, literally for being genuine. And what I mean by that is... <laughs> 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 it's not like you tell people to f off or anything like that but your responses now yeah. or to, and this is what people like your responses are genuine mm. you know if there's an idiot that will say a comment out there yeah yeah but originally when social media started people wouldn't say anything because they didn't want to be like oh i'm like argumentative blah 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 mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but now i think the word genuine is so important because people appreciate you way more it's like my my friend Tom, TG. Yeah, yeah exactly. Who, who's a car YouTuber. He's actually on tomorrow. Um, I've worked with him for years, been friends with him for years. He, I know he tones it down for yeah, social media <laughs> and he's still terrible. But yeah. people, it's like Jeremy Clarkson. Yeah, exactly. People love him because he's so genuine. Mm-hmm. You know, he might be old school in the way he thinks, but there's always an element of us that are transitioning generations, exactly. right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. we get it. Um, and so, yeah, you've been obviously written about a few times for mm-hmm. responding to people. Um, do you feel like that's a much more last year or two thing where you can like just be honest oh, and just be like, do. I never would have replied or said anything. Before. Yeah. Like yeah. again, because I think about diversity and I think about yeah. we're a street dance group. We don't, you know, we don't ruffle any feathers. Yeah. People, you know, I remember when we first won, my dad used to always say to us, likability factor. Like that was yeah. something he like drummed into us. Like there's no point making yourself unlikable. Do you know yeah. what I'm trying to say? Yeah. And I, I always, that kind of always stuck with me. And then it was only when I got a little bit older, since I you know, have my own kids the past couple of years, that I kind of think like, yeah, but it's kind of hard to be likable when people can clearly tell you're not being you. Yeah. And I'd rather have, you know, a section of people. We always come back to this, like you can have loads and loads of people following you, but just, they just don't really care. And yeah. you can have a much smaller section that really engage with you. And you're yeah. better off in that, in that pool. Trust me, like you are. If you yeah. can have both, then like you're winning, like you're smashing it. Yeah, That's yeah. when you get like these uber influencers just doing crazy stuff. Yeah, but yeah. if you can have that section of people, you're better off. And I was like, I'm sick and tired, especially when it comes to social media. Like everyone has an opinion yeah. on everything. And that's yeah. fine. But like, yeah. you've really, really got a question the psychology behind 
I don't like this podcast. I'm not going to have a chat with one of my friends about it. I'll just be like, no, it's not really for me. And I'm not even just going to comment on the video and say I don't like it. I'm going to go out of my way to make sure I dislike you and what you do. And it's like, who like who cares that much? Like, it's so weird. Yeah. Uh, it was literally, I had a conversation with my fiance today. She rang me and I was at Kiss, really upset. Because there's like different websites and all sorts, like literally dedicated to like trolling. Yeah. It's, it's bizarre. People really? go on there, they sign up like with their real name, like link their own Instagrams and everything. And they just, they just have a bitch about people they don't like. And I'm like, it's bizarre. What? Like the stuff that gets said about, you know, my kids, for example. Man, it's crazy. Really? Like, yeah, man. Like on a regular basis. Like it's so nuts. What? And it's like, you kind of have to question. There's one side of where someone's like just trying to be antagonistic. You know, yeah, they're yeah. just trying to get that response. Yeah. And then the, the, the weirder part is, is when it comes from, you know, when people are oh, what a weirdo who makes their own page, like, makes a fake page and does that. And it's like, even though I don't agree or I think obviously you still think it's bad, at least it's like they're just trying to antagonize you or trying to get a reaction, attention, whatever it is. Yeah. When it's coming from like a genuine person, like a 45 year old mum called Lisa from Essex, who's like actually really upset about something and feels their need to go out of their way, tell you what's wrong, yeah. tell you how much of a bad person you're. I'm like, who cares that much? Oh it's bizarre. God. And it kind of got to the point where I was like, I keep going, oh, no, it's fine. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then I was like, I'm not being me. And even sometimes I would reply to him and I'd try and be like really, really nice and be like, oh, you know, is there anything like, you know, like how, what, what's the issue here? But yeah. really, I want to be like, bro, shut up. Like, if I'm honest, you know, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. the, you know, and it, it's weird because, and this is kind of the, the mindset I've kind of always like kind of taken from it. In all the years we've been doing stuff, yeah. never has one person ever come up to me in real life and said anything bad, really? even if they think it. Yeah. No one's ever done that. Sure. And, like, and that's the weird part with social media. It's like, it gives you like this veil to kind of do and say whatever you want because to yeah. them it's not real. But when I'm sat at home yeah. and you're telling me that, you know, like, oh, like really, like really horrible stuff, man. Like, your kids are so ugly, like this, 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 they should die and they should this. I hope your kids get caught in a house fire. And I'm sat there like, how what? do you, I know to what? you, yeah, dude, like crazy stuff. Like it's madness. And like, it, especially last year when we did that performance on Britain's Got Talent, right? So we did a performance as like a summary of 2020. Yeah. And there was a section in there uh, about Black Lives Matter. Yeah, yeah I watched that. I see. Right. Yeah. And dude, from then, it was, it was almost like a red flag to a ball. Like, it was crazy because you had a lot of people who had a genuine grievance with it. Yeah. And then you had some people where it was like, okay, this this whole shitstorm's kicking off. Yeah. Then the when I say the trolls, like people just try and antagonize you, creep out as well. Yeah. And, like, I'm talking, like, literally thousands and thousands of messages along that level. Like, even even my cars, like my car got, uh, like, cement thrown all over it, my Aston. What? Yeah, man. It's got, it's got stuff thrown all over it. Like, it was it was crazy. Because your dance routine. Dude, it was crazy. Like, honestly, it was mad. Like, it, it was mad. Like, it just went so, so far, so quick. And we was just like, how has this happened? Do you know what I mean? Like, it was crazy. I can't That's get my head around it. that. I know. I know. Someone I, threw cement at your yeah, car. Dude, <laughs> dude, do you know what? Funnily enough, I sent the picture earlier to someone. I'm just going to quickly show you it. Where did they get cement from? It was like obviously wet and they thrown it ah. and it's just all over my car. Yeah. And that's that's because of that, not because someone not, hates us the most. I'll probably throw cement over They're there. They're probably like rich, yeah. rich fucking. <laughs> <laughs> but it was all kind of in that time frame, you know? To, to be honest, it looks like a dinosaur's just on your car. <laughs> If I'm honest. It does. Doesn't look like cement. I know, I know. They're just like throwing can stuff all that? over it. I don't know if you can see that. It doesn't look like it's not. Oh, right. Premium T-Rex. There you, go. there you go, right there. But crazy, right? It's just it's just weird stuff that like happens and it's like people get so angry, like it's like I don't live in like some gigantic, you know, secluded, yeah. gated or thing. Yeah. Because I live down like a normal road, right? And like a lot of people in my area know where I live. Sure. And there'll be times where, you know, I was in my office, yeah. which was basically my, my garage, just like converted, I was in yeah. there. And I came out, and there's like 
people trying to climb over my back gate, stuff like that. No like, it's crazy. It's crazy stuff, man. Like, it's really, it's really weird. Like the way people kind of behave and react to stuff. It's just yeah. really strange. Do, do you think that? Um, do you think that it was definitely to do with the BLM thing? Because I've watched the video, and your dancing was really poor. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what the problem is. You clearly it was, was just so <laughs> bad. I actually think it was the rest of the group. I thought about throwing cement on your car. I, I after thought that about throwing cement on myself <laughs> after that. Uh. <laughs> no, no, it was really good. Actually. Thank you, Dave. No, okay. it wasn't like it's. Ge- it was a genuinely good performance. Thank you, bro. Thank you. I, I watched it this morning. Right, right. right? Um, I actually don't watch that much TV, but I've watched it now which is like six months later. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So at the time, there was like lots of hysteria and there's yeah, so yeah. much going on. I think if you were to watch it now, I think it's all that's gone and you yeah. can sort of understand it a bit better. And it's just chilled. Like, like, yeah. like I said, the weird part was, it's kind of been known, because one of my friends, yeah. he lives in Australia and he, uh, he messaged me, he's like, George, you're on the news in Australia. Are you guys even done something really good or really bad? And I was like, this has got so out of hand so quick. I'm talking like all the chat shows, wherever it be, yeah. Loose Women, Good Morning Britain, yeah. this morning, every show there was a debate on it. They had a specialist on really? debate. And it went on and on and on. I think it's it's the most complained TV moment in the last decade. Are you joking? Yeah, me? yeah, yeah. Something like that. Or but, second only second to there was something on Big Brother where I think a girl like said she got hit or something, or she didn't get hit, something like that. Oh, that's a mess. You're saying not good, really. But yeah. it, it got like thirty thousand complaints like, to Ofcom and it, it was it was really, really blown out of proportion. And essentially it was a summary of twenty twenty. Yeah. And it would have been a lie to say that the Black Lives Matter movement, that yeah. whole situation, George Floyd, the whole thing, wasn't a big part of the year. Because She's it fine. was. Yeah, yeah. And secondly, something that is kind of when I say close to our heart in a sense of We'd experienced certain things growing up. Yeah, we all sure. had. Yeah. And, you know, it was kind of, it would have felt weird to not do it. And I, I've, I've said this a few times. When Ash came to me and said, this is the performance we're doing. Yeah. These are the ideas. So I love it. Summer of 2021. You know, we talk about the NHS. We talk about COVID, yeah, all this yeah. stuff. And he said, yeah, and no, there's this bit. And I was like, I just don't think we should do it. Which bit's that? Black Lives Matter bit. Oh, right, I, was, right, I, was, okay. I just don't think we should do it. Yeah. And he was like, the fact that you think that we shouldn't do it is the reason we have to. Why? Know? Why didn't you want to do it? Because I didn't. I didn't. I know the reaction would. I didn't think the reaction would have been as bad as it was. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I anticipated a bad reaction. Yeah. Backlash. Definitely. Like, but just before that, we did a TV show uh, called The Talk. It was on Channel Four, I think. Yeah. And it's just basically about you know people's experience growing up as either like a black or mixed race kid mm-hmm. in, in UK and. You know, if they ever had to have a talk about certain things, and that was essentially it. And me and my brother, we got kind of flashed up in little bits and bobs, and we had like a little chat in there. And some of the comments that I got from that, and I was like, I was like, it's just not worth it. I was like, let's not do it. And and again, it was just it was just weird. Like I said, like my my fiance, my kids, me, like it's annoying. But there are the the scarier part is it's not the people making fake accounts and saying racist stuff and you're just trying to get a reaction yeah. it's the people who have a genuine problem like they'll they'll cut they'll mess with about listen when you came over to this country and then i was like man i was born in east london what are you want about yeah, like, yeah but like they genuinely mean it like they're so hit up and so angry Whoa. like how long have you been here look at you doing this and i'm like i'm so confused like they're so angry and like yeah. you know they think they have a genuine point yeah and it, and I'm like, that's the scarier part of it. Like people get like are so so hit up about the whole thing. Yeah. And I remember when the whole Ofcom thing was happening with all the complaints. I can't remember where the stat came from, but it turned out like nearly half of the people who complained hadn't actually seen the performance at the time of complaining. No. They just basically heard what they thought it was, were really angry about it. I think we spent the next six seven even now like every day on twitter only be like two or three but i'll still get called racist or say yeah. i don't like white people or something and stuff like that and i think after all that kind of stuff obviously you have to kind of be sensible about it and not have fuel to a fire but especially after all that i was just like, i can't be bothered to keep yeah. like not saying stuff back to people like if you're being stupid i'm going to tell you you're being stupid at this point do you know what i mean do you know what's funny is that like so my best friend since i was two is a guy called leroy Leroy Wilson. Right. Obviously, he's mixed race with yeah. a name called Leroy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I was the best man at his wedding a couple of years ago. So I grew up with him. So I didn't, I never really understood, like, that, mm-hmm. you know, like for me, it was just like, yeah. 
Um, I just knew he could run a hell of a lot faster than me. Yeah. All, and every, every sport, he was like three times better. Yeah. I was like, how the fuck is this yeah. um, but, but yeah, so like, I don't, I don't like when you're talking about it then, it's like, it, I still find it like odd that people can't differentiate things. It's like, because I'm taking it, your mum's white. Yeah, mum's white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And white. you were born here. Born here. It, yeah, yeah. yeah, I just can't, I can't really, get my uh, head around dude, it. Dude, it's as baffling to me as it is to you. Like, it is so strange. Like, when it's that, it's, it, it's just that mindset that, that yeah. Because I'm like, so there's some people that I've spoke to, and I was like, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. Like, I, like some people like help. I remember one kid messaged me after, and he was like, you know, my dad was a police officer, my dad was stabbed, my dad was this, my dad was that. He's retired now, but he went through all yeah. of this stuff. And I was like, your dad sounds like a legend. No one's saying anything bad about your dad. Like, what yeah. are you talking about? But yeah. in his head, it was like, I don't think he'd even watched the performance. It was like me, we, me and the group had gone on TV, yeah. said that, you know, we hate police and they're the reason for racism. And I was like, I, dude, I don't know where you're pulling these oh messages God. from. Like, you know, and that's just one example of someone getting hit up, yeah. really going off on one, yeah. telling me how much of a despicable human I am and that I should die. And then yeah. when I actually explained it to him, I was like, yeah, I suppose that makes more sense, man. And then blocked me. I was like, okay. It was just like really weird. If, if that's their way of reasoning things, then I'm racist too. Yeah, but because I hate white people. <laughs> Most people I hate. Yeah. I fucking hate everybody. I just hate people. I literally hate ninety percent of people. <laughs> like, uh, so I must be proper like super racist to everyone. I'm like, <laughs> is there things as black supremacists? Because no. that's me then, yeah. right? Because. <laughs> I hate most white people. <laughs> like, I hate everyone. <laughs> I don't hate everyone. But it's like, I don't hate them because he's white. Yeah, yeah, I, just I hate him like because it. he's a dick. Yeah, exactly. That's like, that. yeah, it doesn't yeah. make me, like, racist against white people. Exactly. It, like, to me, I can't get my head around that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I just can't, you know. It was a it, really weird thing to navigate. Really yeah, really so it's, it's not like if my friend Leo hated a white person, I'd be like, oh, you hate him because he's you white. white people, I'm like, well, I know he's a dick. Yeah, exactly. You know, it, it makes absolutely, like, it's baffling. It's baffling. It's weird, right? Hopefully, I think hopefully time will get rid of that. Yeah, I um, think so. I think it was just a really weird, I think it was just a lot of people who, one, took stuff out of context yeah. or to were a bit sensitive to a situation that was going on and just yeah. kind of rallied to this non-existent banner yeah. and just, you know, like really kicked off. And I think, you know, talking about social media, I think that was didn't help because it's obviously like you've got the algorithms, you've seen the social dilemma, I take it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? You've yeah, got, yeah. you got algorithms, you've got right wing, left wing. Mm -hmm. So if someone was on the train of, being against BLM, the chances are all their Instagram feeds were based on that, and then you popped up at the wrong time. Mate. <laughs> so yeah. the, yeah, the yeah. hysteria, like, so if you, if people, I recommend people watch it now, and then, because it was a year ago, yeah, almost, yeah, yeah. watch it now and, like, take what you will from it now, mm -hmm. and, like, just, it's, I think it's easier to understand. Mm -hmm. I just think, like, social media plays a massive part. Also, like, back in the day, if you'd have done that 10 years ago with no social media, no one would have said anything. Yeah, it would have just been there. Uh, that was there. That was that. And yeah. And move on. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Yeah. Because the influx of stuff, it wasn't immediate. That's what was weird. Really? Mm -mm. It was like the performance, your normal, really liked it. Yeah. Some random people, oh, I thought it was shit. And that was that. You yeah. Know? Uh, and a lot of people, oh, we really loved it. You know, like, we loved it. It was really meaningful. It wasn't for like a few days, like a week after until like the influx of like, yeah. this is an uproar really kicked in. Yeah. It was like some immediate reaction. It was like, <gasps> That's why like, I think it kind of took us by surprise even more because I was waiting for the yeah. real kickoff as soon as it went out and it didn't happen. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, you get your standard comments. Some people didn't like it. And there was a few comments like that, but nothing major. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, it was after a week or so. Like, yeah, it really, really went nuts. Cement mixer turned up. Exactly. <laughs> like, what's going on? <laughs> Mixing the cement, getting it ready. Yeah. It's crazy. No, when I watched it today, no, it's like really good performance. Thank you, dude. Thank like, you. it's like really like good. Thanks, man. Like, <laughs> Thank you. And, I think because there's no hysteria at the moment going on. Like, I remember the NHS bit probably the, the most. most. Right. Yeah, because that was towards the end. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so isn't that weird? So does weird. that put you off in the future to do something like that? Probably, right? Probably a little bit. <sighs> M mate, me more so than Ash, maybe, than my older yeah. brother. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, he's the choreographer and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because I, by, I think by nature, I'm a bit more cautious in that aspect. Like, I'm like, I'd rather not have the hassle. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But then at, that being said, 
it wasn't like again the sad part is it wasn't like we did anything wrong. Do you know what I mean? Which yeah. is which is the crazy which is the crazy point. Like we're at a place where I'm like, oh, it makes me go, oh, I'm not sure, oh, but I didn't even do anything wrong. Yeah. So weird, weird. It's a bit sad actually. It is, really, it is a bit, but it's a bit sad. Unfortunately, like it is the world we live in. Like it is just the nature of stuff. People don't like stuff, you know. And when they don't, they let it be heard. Yeah. You know, if I go on, if I go and you know, trip advisor or something, if someone's had a bad experience, you can bet they're 10 times more likely to write about it than if they've had a great one. You know what I mean? It's just the way yeah. people are. Like, if, they have, if they're angry about something, they, they want it. It's like this need for, like, payback. It's like, no, I'm going to let people know that this wasn't, I'm not happy with this. Whereas when someone really loves something, like, yeah, yeah. generally, like, they will say it if it comes up or this, that, but how often will people really go out of their way to be positive? Not as much. You know, when people want to be negative, they really want to be negative. Yeah. In my experience. Imagine you can channel all that energy into something good. You could literally power the world, can you? And you could do anything with something like yeah. that. But again, um, it's gonna it's just part it's just it's part and parcel, especially I think if in any job, but especially one where you're like in the you know, public eye, neg- negativity is just yeah. un- unfortunately a huge part of it. And it doesn't matter. Yeah. I don't it's weird because I see so many like people on social who I completely respect, by the way, trying to yeah. talk about, and this is like such a minute part of negativity, but like trolling and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And in a weird way, I'm like, I kind of just see like fuel to a fire in a weird way. Yeah. Like the more you try and counteract it, the more people get a buzz out of, oh, I see. Yeah. They're going to repost my message to say how much of a scumbag I am. It's like this weird, I don't know. It's like fuel to a fire. It's I think, so strange. But like, the, I think that comment that I read that you said, um, it was something like someone's racist and you were like, well, I'm going to tell my mum or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to tell my mum. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what, what was it? What was it? It's brilliant. Ash, he said, Ashley Banjo, here we go. He's the racist. He, um, he's marking everyone down. He's not black. And I was like, yeah, man, 100%. Like, you should see him at Christmas dinner the way he stares at my mum. He hates him. <laughs> <like that. laughs> Like, yeah, he's definitely racist. It's like, shut up, you idiot. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh so my God. stupid. People forget. It's like, yeah, it's just like, oh, God. It's so weird, right? It's, it's mind-blowing. It's Maybe. absolutely mind-blowing. Um, all right, cars. Yes. Cars. <laughs> <laughs> the funniest thing about cars is that you can't fit in a Lamborghini. <sighs> so upsetting. <laughs> so upsetting. I love that. I love that. I said I would, I, I would, so I would, I would love to have Hurricane Spider. I can't, yeah. Honestly, I can't fit in it. Like, I tried, went to test drive by my head's literally above. Like, I'm like this, staring yeah. out. Can't fit in it. Okay, so first car. My first car was an Audi A5. What color? White. A white Audi A5. And I was such a dick when I had that car. You yeah. know, I was 17. <laughs> I came up, we just won Britain's Got Talent, and I was like, I'm going to buy an Audi A5. I had no business having that car. I curved the wheels about five times a day. I got it. Like, yeah. I couldn't drive. Um, but that was my first car. Yeah. Well, that's a lie, actually. My first ever car was a Hyundai Accent, I think it's called. That sounds terrible. Dude, it was gold, but like a musty greenish Wait, gold. the colour the color, or it was yeah. gold isn't cool? No, it was like the colour is a like musty greeny gold. <laughs> and my dad used to sell second-hand cars off this place, out of this place in Raynham. Yeah. And he gave it to me. And this car, when I say it would, like, it would just switch off, yeah. It must have been like the first ever car to have power steering and it would switch off and everything would lock up. So you'd been like doing 70 mile an hour and the car would just turn <laughs> off and you'd have to pray that you could get it to turn back on so you could steer the car. Dude, it was crazy, this thing. Um, so gold Hyundai. Yeah, I learned to drive in that. Did and your then, dad not like you? Apparently not, because my brother, my brother had a green Punto from him. When, a green <laughs> Fiat Punto um, when he first, when he learned to drive. So I got that. And I passed in August, so I drove that from August, and I picked the car up in September. So technically, I suppose that's my first car. But my first car that I bought Absolutely. that was my car was yeah, my A5. But okay, white A5. And yeah. then what did you have? What give us your list of cars that you've had? Do you know what the amount of TTs I've had is ridiculous. So if I try and think about, you, the... you used to be a hairdresser. <laughs> is that why? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember that banner. Imagine me as well, my size, get out of the TT. I was like, closest thing to an operator and get them for now. So I had quite a few, co- I've had quite a few cars because I swapped quite often. Yeah. But if I try and remember the list, yeah. I think I went A5. Mm-hmm. Then I had a 335 convertible. So BMW. Yeah. Oh, God, even worse. Then I, I sold that and I bought a Q5. Okay. I had a Q5. Then I started the Q5 and I bought an A5 convertible. And then this is when the TT stuff starts. So once I had, okay. I sold the A5 convertible and I bought 
I had a matte white TTS, and that was like my baby. I was like obsessed yeah. with it. Yeah. Then um, I got a few points, and I was I think at the time I was like nineteen. I couldn't get insured on anything, so I bought another. I bought another TT. I bought a diesel one. Yeah. But I bought it. I wrapped it matte red. I had this huge, uh, this huge rear wing on it. Like I made it look really awful. <laughs> and then I, from there, gosh, from there I bought another three series. Yeah. Like three series. Then I bought another TT. Then I sold that. Bought another TT. Sold that. Bought an S5. Yeah. Good car. Sold that. Bought a Q7. Q7. Yeah. Then by this point, I had saved a bit of money. I'd I'd got my first house. Yeah. And I had a little bit of money spare. So I bought a, it was my first ever like, like really expensive car. I yeah. bought an AMG GTS. Yeah. So I'd love that. Then after my GTS, come on, George, think now. 16. Oh, after that, my GTS, um, I found out that my partner was pregnant. So I ended up buying a, a C63, thinking I was like, I put a baby. Well, have you seen it like that? Obviously didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I had a G wagon. Yeah. Gosh, yeah, I sound like a right idiot here. I had a G wagon. Where do you live? I live. Oh, these are not all at the same time, by the way. I'm like selling yeah. them and stuff. But, yeah, yeah. but I live in Essex. Obviously, G wagon. G wagon in Essex. <laughs> yeah. I get it. So I did G wagon. Like... I'm going to. I, worst car I've ever owned for me personally. Right, it was yeah. a G350D as well. It wasn't like a GC3. So one the proper one. Exactly. Exactly. It didn't sound good. Yeah. It didn't sound good. It wasn't good on fuel. It obviously wasn't quick. Handled yeah. it was the old shape, so it handled like a truck. The only thing it did was people would go, oh, it's a G-Wagon. Yeah. The only thing it was good for. Um, so then after the G-Wagon, I bought a, funnily enough, I ended up buying an S4 for my fiance. Right. And I ended up selling the G-Wagon. So we just had, we both had the S4. Yeah. Um, cause, and then that was the car that we always had yeah. for my little boy. Like, yeah. so we had, we had a bigger car for him. And then we had the S1, I bought a GTC. Yeah. So I did simple GTR, which yeah. I just found unforgiving. Like it was just too much for me on a daily basis. Yeah, like yeah. to just travel in and out to yeah. work. Um, and then I bought my my Aston and, and my uh I've got my M8. Uh, uh I had a Q8 and I swapped down and got an SQ7. Gotcha. So quite a few cars in total. How are you finding the Aston? Because I had an Aston. And um, my experience of that was I would never buy a new Aston again because it lost so much money. Yeah, depreciation wise, it's brutal. Like it was, I, I got a, I got a really good deal on it, which is the only, which is the reason. Like I said, like whenever I look at cars, I always try and look at it in terms yeah. of like what, how can I get out of this, or yeah. what can I get out of this if need be. When you say good deal, mm -hmm. what deal did you get? Because I paid one four nine for mine. Jesus. And two years later, it was ninety k. So I lost sixty grand. Okay, so in two I, years, <laughs> that is that is painful, bro. And I had to pay insurance and fuel. Yeah, <sighs> yeah. I'll um, do that again. It's yeah, almost exactly. McLaren level of shit. Yeah, of course. Don't get me started. <laughs> so, uh, my Aston, I think list it was like one forty or something like mm -hmm. that, and I think I gave one oh one for it, something like that. So not new, like oh no, it was it was brand new. Yeah, what? Yeah, I got a huge whack off it huge whack um which is why i i yeah i kind of went that way so i got a really good deal on it okay you got a decent deal yeah which is why yeah. I, and which is why i kept it um yeah. uh so like I, and i i love my aston really similar to my gts though my mg GTs. same engine yeah, pretty exactly. much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. really similar yeah um the, the only thing that bothers me about my aston like there's such a premium on this car it's so cool the I don't know why it feels like a car that's 20 years older than it is in terms of like technology in there. Just, yeah. just awful. Like in that aspect, really not good. Yeah, it's just like an old AMG. Really is. Like it's not, it's, it's, it's just not, and for that, it's just not a nice everyday car yeah, it's, for me to use. Like, do you know what I mean, that's, my M8, I absolutely love it. Like I love my M8. It doesn't have like the drama of my Aston, obviously. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, in terms of tech being comfortable, I know it's designed more for that, but. The, the tech in the Aston really like it really bothers me. Like, I yeah. get in it and I'm like, I, I only ever drive this car because I want to drive it, yeah. not because I actually want to use it and be in it. Does that make sense? Yeah, I just, I'm, I'm not a fan of it. Mm. Mm. Just not a fan of it. I think the icing on the cake was losing the money. Yeah. If I'd have not lost so much money, I, I would have been okay. But I just remember the first time I started driving it, I drove a demo way months before they came out and they kind of obviously it like hooks you in. 
Um, but then when I like re- realized, and you look at all the other cars that are coming out of all this amazing tech, like the new Ferrari Roma and stuff like that, you think, what is Aston Martin doing? It's like, it's no one working there. I, I, I just don't understand. Like, literally, it's like it's it's got like the same interface as like a 2012 C Class. Like, yeah. I just, I, and you, you've paid 150 grand for this car. It's, it's insane, like, bro, yeah. what is going on? Yeah, they're in trouble. Yeah. But talk about car companies in trouble. <laughs> Um, you can't fit in a Lambo. I can't. But you can nicely fit into a McLaren. No, thank you. But going back to social media, obviously McLaren, I don't know, like they are just the most like, I don't know. It seems from online and social media that they've got it all wrong. Yeah. And they are obviously have um, build quality issues with a lot of their cars. And, um, you know, luckily to social media, like normal people in the car world is quite small. Mm. Um, people on social media share all this kind of stuff now. Um, Tom, mutual friend, who's you know car YouTuber and stuff, obviously has a massive issue with McLaren. Mm. Um, you've been in cars forever. Like, what do you think McLaren are doing wrong? And um, I heard that their last GT that they brought out the GT they mm. sold seven. I don't, seven. I don't honestly. I don't. Tom told me that yesterday, but I was like, I don't. I was like, how how bad is it? The thing is, like. We were talking about how social media does influence, doesn't influence. I think it massively does when it comes to McLaren. Yeah. You know, because so many, like, you even, Sol- uh, is it Solomon, um, uh, the guy in America? Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sol- Solomon doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he had a McLaren that like, was on fire and stuff like that. So do you think, like, social media has the power to damage a brand like McLaren, which is huge, you know? Okay, put it this one. way. I've never driven one, but I would never buy one based on social media, which, really? which is awful. The only thing that ever draws me to it is that, like, I look at a 570S that you can pick up for 80 grand now, and I'm like, what? How? But yeah. then even then, I'm like, still wouldn't buy it. You wouldn't. Still wouldn't do it. No. And it's a lot of car for the money based on based on paper and the yeah. stats, but because yeah. of the brand, and all I ever yeah. hear, the aftercare from McLaren, like, not in a horrible way, like, I just don't hear positive things, and that frightens yeah. me. You know, you're, gonna, you're paying a lot of money for a car, and it's a lot, it's even more worse crazy amounts if it goes wrong and by the yeah. sounds it's not if it's when and it just something yeah. for me that in terms of turning that around we said what can they do i don't know there's no answer it, like they make cars look cooler and like they like they're like the 12c like, like the 12c sorry the 720s yeah it just looks it awesome like it looks it looks like something straight out of gta like it's crazy yeah yeah, yeah. but it's like the rate at which they depreciate i'm pretty sure tom had one and did a smarter thing and yeah, tried to out, shift. Yeah. yeah, but like, I know someone that lost two hundred grand on one. Paid three seventy. What? I don't even know. I don't even know what to say. Like, you <laughs> can't justify that. And then want. if the service is bad and it goes wrong, if you loved it and you had a great experience and everything about it, like you yeah. said, the, the, the yeah. service was awesome. But it's yeah. like, you know, I get, I get. Sometimes you, you're buying cars, and listen, it's very rare that you're buying cars to earn money. Like you have to kind of accept that at some point you're, yeah. you're, you're losing, you know, but you're kind of paying for that privilege and that experience. But if it's neither of those, what is the point? Yeah. You know, what, what is the point? Um, talking about influencers and taking money for ads and stuff like that. Mm. I actually know influencers, influencers that have been paid by McLaren to do things and the car's broken down. And they have they haven't put it on social media. Oh gosh. Like oh gosh. like brand new cars. Like I don't even know what to say. I don't what, even know what to say to that. What do you what I mean, like, yeah, where do like where do you go? Like there is but that, that's my point. Like I, I feel like there's only so much, especially from someone on on an outside point of view, it's like how do you repackage this? How do you do this? It's like, dude, before you repackage or try and shift anything, you need to sort the issue out with itself. Yeah. Because the issue's there. Why the issue's there is gonna keep happening. Like it's not normal. So like, I've got friends, I know people like they've been locked inside their own car for half an hour. Like they can't they couldn't get yeah. out, locked yeah, yeah, in. And yeah, I'm like, yeah. what if something would have happened? Like on it, fire. Yeah, like it's 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 bad. One of our other friends actually, yeah, I can't believe it, I forgot about this. I think it was a six fifty. Yes, was it? Anyway, their, their, their entire unit burnt down. Like the car, the car, like electrified, like o- overnight, their entire unit burnt down. Because it's McLaren. Because it's McLaren. It's part of it's called fire. Because I was like, oh. I'm going to be honest, when I first heard, like, in my head, part of me was thinking, 
what have you done here? I'm sure it's wise or what, what's going on? Of course, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. Everyone had that assumption a little bit. Yeah. And the, no, no, the, the footage, like, you can see it, like, inside. Well, it just, it just catches fire. Are you joking? I'm not me? joking, bro. It just catches fire. And it's not even on? It's not. They haven't been running it. They haven't done anything, like, for a, at least a couple of hours. It's in there and it catches fire, bro. But honestly, the, and the entire unit burned down. They lost everything. <laughs> God. And they, they, there was a, someone had a uh, someone had their Hurricane Perth in there. There was a four eight eight in there. Their own Bill GTR, which they spent like something stupid. You know, they've had it years. They must have been like you know supercharged to the tits. I think you had like yeah. over like eleven hundred brake. You know, like, crazy stuff. Yeah, burnt down like all gone. Like they lost everything. Like customer cars, their cars, the unit, like gone. And I, I'm like, there's only so many times. Don't get me wrong. You know, I still every time I see them, I go. That's cool, man. That's so cool. But it's yeah. like, there's no, excuse the pun here, there's no, there's no smoke without fire. Do you know mm. what I'm trying to say? Like, there is literally at some <laughs> point you've got to go, well, I mean, there's only so many times you go, oh, that was a bad car or they did something wrong. Because yeah. every other day you can go on social. And like you said, the car world's small. Yeah. Something's happened with a McLaren. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's just the way it is. Yeah, there's pages of it. Literally. It's no smoke without fire and no fire without a McLaren. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, use that one. That's the next advert. Oh god, it's bad, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, the world's world's changing. You gotta, you gotta do. I mean, do you know what you say? You like look at McLaren. I don't even get that when I see them. I don't. No. You you put one next to a Lamborghini. Mm. You know, if you t- like have a hundred like teenage kids. Yeah, and you know, it's like they're just never gonna look at the McLaren. They just no, look I at agree. their Lambo. I agree. It's crazy. Yeah, but Lambo has got that pedigree. Like, there's nothing. Even every time I see any Lambo, like even I was, I love like Paul's Mercy, his Mercy Largo. Like it just took me back. It took me back to like being a kid. Like the presence of it is just insane. Yeah. Even no matter how old they are, whatever it is, yeah, it's just insane. So yeah. I agree. Like Lambo do have that pedigree where you just go. Oh, question for you: uh, Ferrari versus Lambo. I know you're probably gonna go Lambo. But mm. what is it? There are some people who like. I mean, they have a real dislike for Ferrari, and I just don't get it. Yeah, no, I don't. Do, I I love them both, but um, I just wish Ferraris had more presence. Agreed. I think the four eight eight. Once the four eight eight came out, I was just disappointed. Just like I drove one, and I was like, well, I just didn't. I got out, and I was like, what was it like to drive? I've never driven one. A bit bit boring, really, because it's turboed now, mm. and I think unless you're driving it full tilt you know then you'll get you'll get out like you know but with a lambo you could go to the fish and chip shop in lambo come back sweating yeah yeah exactly you're like what the, yeah, the sound yeah. of it you're like get out you're like what just happened yeah, to me yeah. you know chips everywhere <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> oh. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know so it's like and you get in and it's theatrical mm-hmm. and that's what they're like a lot of these you know obviously we're moving over to the like, whole electric thing and stuff mm-hmm. but the theater is the most important thing. That's why when you're a kid, your expectation, you know, you have a poster of a Lamborghini on your wall, you know, whatever it is, you, when you get in it, you want to feel like you've just been plugged into something. Yeah. And you yeah. get it with an Lambo. You just, with Ferrari, you don't, don't get it. You don't get it. I mean, maybe that's not what they're after, but um, I think for us, you know, being car nuts, mm-hmm. you know, that's what you want to get out feeling like you've had an experience. Agreed. Yeah. And I think they're just missing it. Really. it no, no yeah. Idea. And I've driven pretty much every Ferrari, I'd say, even the 812. I was about to ask you, literally 812. Yeah. That, I, that versus the, the, the F12. I mean, it, um, I just feel like 812 just didn't quite catch. Just didn't catch. It's cool. It's yeah. classy. If you're like a, you want to be like James Bond, but be classy, get mm-hmm. a dark gray 812. They're yeah. cool. Um, but you get in a Lambo and it just does it. It's, it's different. It yeah. just, yeah, it just, it just totally, and no one has been able to do it anything like them. I mm-hmm. don't know. I've, Ferrari's like a different type of brand. It's like more of a, uh, you're part of a brand, you buy yeah. into it, you have Ferrari finance, you have, you know, they do look after you and stuff like that. But Lambo is a bit more like gun ho, wild west. <laughs> like, you know, literally, you see that's how people are driving. You can't get in one and not drive it like an absolute weapon. You've yeah. got to really hold it in mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. it's literally like injecting you with adrenaline. Well, someone I know bought an SVJ. Yeah. And 
wild. Yeah, that was like it's just it, 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 it was too much for them. I think. Yeah, yeah, it was it was too much. It, I, I, I've been in an SVJ, and it's like I imagine that's what it's like getting in a ring at WWE. <laughs> You just stand there and you're like, oh, fuck. Here we go. I'm about to get slammed. <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden you're 12 foot in the air you slammed on the floor. You're like, oh, my God, this is like, I hate this, but this is great. That's so you know, funny. That's the only way I can describe yeah, yeah, it, yeah. SVJ. But then that's why you buy it, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, because you're not going to do 100,000 miles in it, you know. That's why you have a Q7 and a Range Rover. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but if you want to get in a ring in WWE, get get, get a SVJ. Lambo. Yeah, you yeah. Know? You're going to get slammed. Um so, all right, well, given all this, um, what's, like, next for you? Right. In in regards to cars or general? Not like, cars. Oh, okay. Cause, <laughs> cause, Who knows? Yeah. Not a McLaren, I yeah, already know. Probably not. But, yeah. <laughs> no, I, don't, um, I do feel like getting suplexed. Maybe a Lambo, who knows? <laughs> you should, you should. <laughs> yeah, I've got to find one I can fit in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah but what's, um, I mean... Everything, hopefully, COVID's going to change back yep. to normal yep. um, in the next couple of months. Everything's, everyone's going to be having fun again, events. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, the past year or whatever, you haven't been able to do any of that. Um, is that, you know, the next sort of six months to a year, are we going to see you doing live shows? Obviously, watching video of me dancing behind stage. Of course, to achieve myself up. Um, yeah, well, we had to move our tour from this year. Yeah. We don't have our tour this year, so we've had to move that till, till 20, uh, 22, spring, spring 22. Yeah. So really excited to go back because w- we wouldn't have toured since the end of 2019. Um, so it'll be good to be back in a place where you're consistently doing live shows and not like, you know, four or five minute performances here and there. Yeah. Full on shows from your own creation, like buzzing to get back to that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's looking like there's going to be a bunch of summer shows as well. Yeah. I'm going to summer run there. So live performing will definitely be back from like summer this year, which I'm really excited for. Like yeah. super excited for. Just, you know, Literally, and I mean literally nothing to do with the financial side of it. Mm-hmm. Just be back doing something that, even though it yeah. scares me, I love doing it. Yeah, right? you know, driving an SVJ, like you just the noise. Just, I love doing yeah, it. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, and then in terms of everything else, like me and my brother, we've got a book, children's book coming out April first. Super excited about that. Is that a joke? No. April 1st. Uh, do you know what? And this is the problem because it's being released on April first. Everybody who's pre-ordered one is waiting for like a punchline. Everyone's waiting for a joke. Like, no, I'm being deadly serious. We've actually released a book. Like, we're not messing around for once. Um, so yeah, there's that side of stuff. And I, I am excited about that because that process was very, very different. Yeah. Uh, trying to channel like a creative sort of thing you normally do into a very different medium. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Um, but I lo- really enjoyed it. Loved doing it. Uh, so between the book, radio, live performances, just surviving, bro. Just yeah. carrying on. Loads going on. Amazing. Yeah, I can't wait for all live shows to like start again. You've got to come to the next one, man. <coughs> you and Joel, you both, both dancing. We'll be on, yeah. <laughs> I make mean, Joel equally as bad as me. Yeah. <laughs> I think I actually tried to teach Joel to dance a little bit in the jungle. Really? He wasn't. He wasn't awful. He was, was he not? Awful. He done. He done all right. Did he yeah. do it with his top off? Of course he did. His job. <laughs> yeah. Saw that tattoo on his ribs. Now very cool tattoo he's got. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, yeah. he had his top off. Dude, he got me into CrossFit. That's how I ended up in CrossFit, and now I've got two CrossFit gyms. He got you into it. He got me into it. I yeah. thought it would have been vice versa. No, like, um, yeah, we were in Ibiza, and I remember like two years before we trained together around the corner from here, and he was like out of breath his legs hurt he couldn't do anything like normal gym stuff and like a couple of years later in Ibiza um, which was a month before you guys went on mm-hmm. I'm a Sled I looked at him and I was like dude where what where's this coming I was from? like where are these muscles like where, mm. how do you get all their muscles and he was like I've been doing CrossFit and obviously I didn't know three weeks later he was going on I'm a Sled mm. so he was literally training like crazy mad you know like you know when you get a, you pull a girl and you do 100 push-ups yeah, before yeah. you like you know before <laughs> you come back out, out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was literally like in the gym every morning like i was like this guy like he's obsessed um so yeah after that i just started doing crossfit and then i got obsessed with it have you ever tried it oh i so at the moment now yeah since lockdown and basically i so mm. i have i've ruptured my acl so i stopped training there i yeah. broke my ankle i was just not training all i trained before was rings it's all i trained right loved the rings to bits yeah. Yeah. and then the past year and a half all i've done is train heavy like i just strength oh yeah that's all yeah. i've done is train heavy i've just like blown up from there which to be fair it doesn't especially in terms of rehearsal and dancing hasn't helped at all sure but like i've got quite a 
like an obsessive nature. So like with rings, at one point, so I couldn't do I couldn't one first of all, I couldn't do a press up, I couldn't do a pull up, but I couldn't do like one pull up on the rings. Yeah. Um, and then once I started training, within like a year, you know, I was doing like different ring routines, and you know, like I think to people who haven't tried it, but like strict as well, I could get like. On a very good day, I think my record was like eleven strict muscle ups on the rings. I got good, like I, I got really obsessed, like really into it. And then once I stopped doing, once I got injured and I couldn't train like that as much, I wasn't at the studio. I had all these weights at home. I then got obsessed with yeah. like strength and compound lifts and this and yeah. that and like training. And then all I've done is, especially throughout the lockdowns, I was like eating to grow and training yeah. hard and this yeah. and that. And then you know, like when you when you trying to have a bulk, having a sneaky side pack of Pringles there and having that excuse to go on bulking always helps, doesn't it? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like now it's like now trying to shift back towards body weight and just trying to find... Because like I just I have enjoyed that at, at a lot of points yeah. in terms of training, just trying different things, Yeah, you know? Um, so I think I'm heading back towards the... I want to head back towards the ring side of stuff. But like in terms of yeah. CrossFit and stuff like that, I haven't really... Well, you do strength, rings, everything. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. I see, I see Joel... I see a lot of Joel's training in this. Yeah. And Joel just himself, like his mobility is really good as well, which is, yeah. which is, which is something I appreciate. Because like for me, uh, my knees, before I even did my ACL, like I, I've got like... I've got arthritis already in like this shoulder. I've got like... Dude, like I've got so many injuries and things that I've yeah. picked up along the way. Yeah. That like, that's what I find most impressive about when I see CrossFitters and stuff like that. Like people's mobility and stuff. Yeah. Super impressive. Because it's... You work on it all the time. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you'll get that if you did it. Mm. Um, yeah, dude, if you ever want to train CrossFit Shortex, just tell me, man. man Anytime. Message. Straight um, up. Yeah, yeah, I'll for sure. There. You'll be watching videos oh. of me trying to crossfit to big yourself up. I'll be watching videos of you dancing. That's what we'll do. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to see that. Yeah, no, I used to think I was all right at dancing. And then... I'm um, sure you are. Everyone No, no, dance. no. And now I think I'm just like a dad. Oh, I am a dad. Without like, being actually. a dad. Yeah. yeah but like, you know, I'm like... Do you know what? My first ever event I organized was a breakdancing event. Really? It's called The Late Show at Cargo. How yeah. mad? Um, How did it go? Oh, it was brilliant. Sick. It was absolutely brilliant. But then it, I, I learned a lot then because um, I remember after one event, it was on a Sunday evening. I only did three at Cargo. Um, the Cargo were like, um, mate, we've only done 80 quid at the bar. And I was like, really? It turns out all break dancers, yeah. they don't drink. They don't drink They just much. drink. They go to the bar and get a glass of water. Well, yeah. I didn't know this at the <laughs> yeah. time, obviously. Like, oh. so they were like, dude, 80 quid at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> I spent more on food for the dancers. Yeah, I'll bet. Like, exactly. it was like 120 quid. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that's why I lost money, because I had to pay fee people. It's like 30 of them. I was like, you know, I had like, um, who did I have there? I had like uh, Soul Mavericks. Oh, really? Yeah, Soul Mavericks? This is 2006. Soul Mavericks? You've got some, some Gs there. Yeah, man. yeah, old school. Sick, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was like, yeah, it was like the first one. And I think um, the other, P the only other uh, B-Boy event was... um. The battle one, I can't remember what it's called now, but it was like a battle event in Brixton. Um, There's a few. But yeah, and then there was like UK um, B-Boy Champs and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. so I, yeah, it's because I, I, a bunch of my friends breakdanced. And, uh, and uh, I was like, oh, I'll just organise it because I can't breakdance. Yeah. <laughs> but I can organise an event. But I can, yeah. <laughs> that was my first event. And then, I'm sick. Yeah, here we are. That's so bad. I still got like, um, like I had it because I worked in advertising yeah yeah people there was photographers there so i i had like legit people like doing the photography and there's like one guy doing like a uh you know one-handed handstand yeah, yeah. you know in a freeze and all this kind of stuff and i, I was fascinated by like b-boys and that kind of yeah, stuff yeah this is before it was like what it is now like red bull you know what they do oh, yeah, bc one it's crazy. Oh, some, yeah some of the stuff i love like when i look at some b-boys it's like there's some kids that like just trained and like 18 90 now not like young young kids yeah but they're still young yeah. And they don't understand, like, just because they've trained and done stuff from when they've been so young. Yeah. Again, like I always say, like, some of the mobility and things they can just do um, is just crazy. insane. Like, they're so, like, they're so strong in certain areas. Yeah. They can just do crazy stuff. Yeah. You know, you take them across the, you take them to the rings, and, like, there's certain things, like, with, with the right technique given to them. Yeah. They're doing stuff that, like, like, a lot of people train two, three years to get. Do you know what I mean? It's crazy. Yeah. It is incredible. If anyone sees this and wants, good content on youtube put in red bull bc1 i oh, don't 
mind, you just will go down a rabbit hole and go, you, just, you can't believe some of the stuff that they do. Mind blown. It's mind like, blown. And it's funny because a lot of people, obviously, you've got friends, you've, you've organized events. Some people don't see a difference. Or you chat to them, like, oh, yeah, I've watched some of that Red Bull stuff doing your dancing. I'm like, mate, I wish that was my dancing. Are you crazy? Some of the stuff they do is just like, it just doesn't look real. And yeah. even when you understand the mechanics behind it, yeah. it makes it even worse. You're like, I still don't. Now I understand even less how you managed to pull that off. Yeah. It's crazy. And, and on beat. Yeah. And they're reacting to the other B-boy. Yeah, it's crazy. To battle man. them. Like, you know, and yeah, it's... it's Calling it, it a skill is underplaying. It is like, yeah, it's insane what those guys can yeah, do. Yeah, it is it is mind-blowing. Yeah. Um, can you do a head spin? No. you got a head spin. <laughs> I've got my do-rag on. <laughs> start, start, start sliding around. <laughs> I wouldn't even try. I'd snap my neck in half. <laughs> so would I. <laughs> <laughs> we're old aren't we oh mate um, too old alright well um, thanks for coming in no thank you for having me bro um, it's been fun I've wanted to meet you for bloody ages I know it's, um, been, it's been a while right yeah I, weirdly I first know you for cars that's the funny thing how jokes because like I saw your cars and I was like oh he's into cars and I was like oh he's in that dance group yeah. diversity <laughs> I was like I know diversity but it's funny isn't it how weird, people mate. sort of um, so weird yeah um, well look uh, let's hang out more 100% um, that's well, why back in McLaren's that's what I think we should do. Oh my god! Imagine <laughs> <laughs> we'll be in debt. Yeah. We'll be, we'll, let's, yeah. let's get rid of the Astons. Yeah, lose even Mine's more gone. money. Mine's okay, gone. Yours is gone. So yeah. You take it. Here. I'll yeah. lose it. I'll lose. Yeah. You know, four thousand pounds a second with yeah. that car. Then we go and get McLarens, lose any more, and then before you can get too upset about it, lock yourself in it, and then it sets on fire. Perfect. Done. <laughs> Next meetup. <laughs> All right, and on that note, <laughs> catch you in a bit, bro. Let's go on, Australia. <laughs> Thanks, man. Oh, thank you, bro. Oh, man, that was sick.